All right. Well, uh, to start with, I want to just make a couple comments. So first of all, James Bragdon, I think it's absolutely true. It's been fantastic how we've gotten really close to our preview releases with all of our documentation. But right now, the extension, the, the stuff Matt's going to talk about is not actually in the docs, what's new just yet. So I made sure it was in the release notes. So you will see samples in the release notes. But what's new is going to be a couple more days. Um, the other thing is we've already had a comment about the fact that the extension syntax might be a little surprising uh, to you when Matt shows it to you. And what I want to just start out saying is that we did prioritize having a fantastic experience for people that are using extension methods, because that's a lot of people, people writing extension methods, a little smaller crew. And so we think it's still a good syntax. We like it. Um, but it, it, it answered some really hard challenges for us that have blocked this feature for a really long time. So with that, we got Mads here to show it to us. So I'm going to just hand it right off to him. All right. Well, if you insist. Um, so let me try to keep the suspense up as long as possible. So in these um, <clears throat> preview releases, um, remember that the default language version is still the ship one. So go in and, and put language in preview if you want to play with the new features that that uh, we are rolling out as these, each of these previews come out. So um, and Matt, while yeah. you're there, if you jump back to that just for a second, these particular features don't care if you're in, in .NET 9 or .NET 10. So right. you don't have to worry about that a whole lot for the features Matt is going to show you today. Right, that's true. Some language features depend more or less heavily on, on there being stuff in the runtime they can utilize. These do not. So um, so feel free to go ahead and, and and play. And before we get to, there are two features we want to show today. So I'll do the other one first. Um, the smaller one, I think it's fair to say. So um, you're probably many of you are aware that you know this. We have novel reference types. Uh, C might be null here in some class, and so we get a nice little warning that hey, we might be dereferencing a null. And we added long ago. We added the null conditional uh, operator to make sure that you can dot or index into a thing conditionally on it not being null. Okay. But what about assignment? So now, now we get a little null warning down here that uh, you are assigning into something that may not be there. And um, maybe you never realized this wasn't there. But up until now, you haven't really had a null conditional operator for it. But we're now allowing you to do the question mark dot on the left-hand side of an assignment. And what that means is the whole assignment, like the the access, the assignment itself, the evaluation even of the right-hand side only happens if C is not null. If C is null, nothing happens, not even evaluation of the right-hand side. So it's exactly the semantics you want. Um, we also um, combine it seamlessly with compound assignment. So everything only happens if C is not null. We even update it, you know, event if you want to sign up an event, uh, the plus equals there works as well. So that's a nice little feature. Just um, we'll collapse a couple of lines of code into one, and um, and it's still I, I think you know very readable what's going on there. So you're welcome. But I'm going to delete this now um, because as you see, here's something about extension members. Now, 20 years ago, in I don't know, sometime in the fall, it'll be 20 years since the first public preview of Link, of language integrated query, which among other things had extension methods in it. And extension methods are great. You know, they allow you, and I, I took some of those very first extension, uh, first the, the first class, static class with extension methods in it, enumerable, and I grabbed a few of those members to, to play with here today. So I have them in here in my own copy. Um, the the general trick of and let's look at the extension method here. The first method is the one I picked. Um, the general trick is we want to pretend that there is an instance method on this receiver type, but what it really is is a static method on some other type that has the the pretend receiver type, if you will, as its first argument, the first parameter marked with a special modifier, and also, we can make it generic because the static um, the static method can also happen to it can take type parameters. Right? So, you know, so instance methods 
pretend instance methods or extension instance methods through static methods. Great. Now, the next question we get, like roughly seven seconds after we release, is what about extension properties? And we can't just go and do extension properties the same way of saying, OK, it, pretend extension instance properties implemented with static properties. Just doesn't work because st static properties do not happen to already have a parameter list we can stick the receiver in, and they cannot take type parameters either. And essentially, for 20 years on and off, we've been arguing back and forth about what to do about that. We essentially got ourselves into like a syntactic dead end that only allows for, for methods. Okay, and that is what we're going to solve in C sharp 14, and what you get the first down payment of in this in this release. So essentially, instead of trying to find a way to wedge this extra information into something like a property, we're just gonna we're just gonna put it somewhere else. So we we add this new kind of declaration called an, an extension block, um, and we just take all this stuff that's about the thing we extend and just stick it up there. Um, and then as part of that extension uh, block, here's the block part, like the curly braces, we have a scope where we can put extension members. Um, so we're going to take our old extension method here and we're going to stick it in there. But now, yeah, first of all, we don't need an extra keyword here because we already have an extra keyword here. But also, we don't need it to be static because what we're doing now is, what we can do now is we can we can put our extension members in here with the signature that they pretend to have as extension members, the, the one that they show up with as extension members. So it looks like up here that it's an instance method with zero uh, parameters. Well, we're declaring it as such. Um, so this is the new syntactic paradigm. And I know you're not here to watch me just give you new syntax for ex extension methods. But let's just look at them for a little longer before we move on to extension properties. I'm just trying to, to heighten the excitement as much as I can. here. So um, you'll notice, <clears throat> yes, the signature is the same as if I had declared it directly on the receiver type, so to speak. The body, though, is, is not like it would be in um, if it was an in a real instance method. The body, instead, is exactly the same as we had before where the, the, uh, the receiver is still <clears throat> a parameter. It's just declared up here. And you still reference it as a parameter. And that has some benefits instead of like changing it to, be, to you using the this keyword here instead. For instance, people use the fact that the receiver is a parameter today in their extension methods to do interesting things, like pass them by ref when they're a value type. So you can mutate the original, like putting attributes on there that have meaning, for instance, about nullability, or even speaking of nullability, some people actually have nullable receivers in on their extension types. And we now you can continue to express all of that exactly like we did before and, and get your um, a little more nullable um, warning action going on there. So um, we have a question in chat that's relevant right now. So can sure. we put, can we put two type parameters on there? You can put as many type parameters as you want, um, and in fact, I I didn't I didn't bring that method today, um, but you can yeah the number of type parameters you put on here is up to you. Um, you just have to use them all in the receiver type. You can have only one parameter here. That is, you can have only one receiver type, right? And they all have to be all the type parameters you put here have to also occur in the type that you are extending. And why is that? Well, that is so that when we see um, something out there and we're trying to find out if we can call the extension method on it, we want to do type inference from the expression that we see. In this case, numbers here is a list of string, which is an enumerable of string, which means we can automatically infer that T source in this case is um, is a string. And if we if we didn't put that restriction on, then we couldn't always infer everything about these type parameters from the receiver. So that's why. And one more while we're here, which is, can it be static? Can the extension method be static? Okay. Yes, and we'll get there. Um, so okay. really good question. The I, um, let me say right now, actually, the like this syntactic paradigm here 
is supposed to enable any kind of extension member you can imagine, pretty much, as long as it's not stateful. Um, we're not enabling all of them um, in one go. Um, this this um, version of the preview has methods and properties, and it has them both static and instance. So pro um, extension properties and extension static methods are probably, or are by far, the, the most requested um, extension members. But we'll keep adding. We hope maybe we can add operators even in this release, but also after C Sharp 14, you'll see them trickle in based on what people request more, based on you know the usual the, the design things when we are on a story arc and we decide what to put in. Um, so let's let's almost get to properties. I just want to show one more thing because one thing that was really important for this approach to design is that you can move your old extension methods into the new syntax if you like, and you don't break anyone. But one of the things you could do with the old syntax is if you, it was a static method, right? And so if for some reason people couldn't call it as an extension method, maybe there was an ambiguity, two different extension methods, or s later some instance method was added that would shadow the extension method, so you couldn't call it such. Well, you could call it as a static method. So for instance, um, I could say my enumerable dot first, and then there would be a st the static method that I declared would be there. But what? But notice here, there's still a static method, and it's still, it looks exactly like the one that we had before, actually. It still has the, the type parameter. It has it has everything added back that we just yanked out. And, and it even has the, uh, it, it's even annotated as an extension method so that an old compiler that doesn't know anything about this can still call it as an extension method. Um, so we just add the extension method back uh, as a static method, exactly the way it would have looked before. So it's completely compatible. Um, and so I'm getting the first character of the first string of my list up there. Um, that's pretty neat. Um, what about properties? OK, let's talk about properties. Um, let's make this one a property. It looks like a, a prime candidate for a property. What do you think it looks like? It looks like ordinary instance property declaration syntax. Just how to get her. And now the reason it's not an error is it's just calling the, the real library um, first overload there. But I'm now I'm calling it as property. And she doesn't yeah, there's your first extension property. There you go. Ta-da. Um uh, it just works. Uh, we can add a setter. It's pretty it's a stupid place to add a setter um, because everything involved is immutable, but let's just pretend. Um, now we can assign to it. So let's assign to it. Um, <laughs> and it just works. Um, now, that's pretty much all there is to it. And when we add operators and whatnot, it'll be the same story. The declaration syntax will look like you were declaring them in in the receiver type, and the bodies will then make use of the of the receiver parameter um, when they want to refer to the receiver. Same. So now we have the syntactic paradigm lined up, and some of it is working today. Now you notice, of course, there's not a first method on the um, on the, the static class there. But what if what if I have what, how do I disambiguate when it's a property, right? How, same thing that you've been doing for two decades now with with uh, calling the method statically. How do you do that with a property? Let's see. Well, there are two new methods, two new static methods, one for each accessor, get first and set first, that we generate on the static class, so you can call them directly. Now, actually, all properties in C sharp have methods for have a method for every accessor on that property. We generate that complete the same name as this and everything. We just always hide it because you're not supposed to call it. But in this case, we decided not to hide them so that you have a way of disambiguating and saying, I actually, you know, so calling the getter of the first property as a static method on the static class that contains the extensions. That is your disambiguation syntax, right? We were trying to think of like a dedicated disambiguation syntax, but Honestly, everything we could come up with would be less pretty than this. I mean, it's not totally great, but it's not bad either. Like, it says what it does, right? So, so there you go. Um, one last thing. Um, somebody asked about statics, and I am going to show you statics. Um, so let's look at another of the classic uh, link methods. It's the range, range method on system link enumerable um, that I copied over. It's not an extension method. It's just a method that 
produces a range, an enumerable event that's a range of numbers. Um, so that's just called as a static method and on on enumerable itself, a my enumerable in this case. But it's actually like a factory method, right? It is really a factory of enumerable events, a static factory, no less. So it'd be kind of cool for discoverability if you could find it on the type enumerable event and see how can I create this? Well, looks like there's a range method on it. So let's do that one as an extension, a static extension method. So um, you can have multiple extension members in the same extension block, and we encourage that when the receiver type is the same. Um, so you don't have to. Um, but in this case, we only have we only want inumal of ints. So we're going to have our own a, a new extension um, extension block here with inumal of ints, um, not all the other inumal. And we're again, we're going to put a, um, a block of all the members we want here. And, um, and there we are. And you see, this time, we don't even have any squiggles and things to fix up because it's already a static method. And we want it to be a static extension method. Um, so everything already looks right. Uh, the only thing to note is that when you only have static members in here, you're not going to make use of the actual parameter, the um, the uh, receiver parameters, so you're, you're free to omit it. You can just put a type there if you prefer. Um, so we're going to do that. But let's look uh, up here. There's still a static method on the static class called range. So just like before, we generate the method onto the static class as well. But of course, it doesn't take extra parameters because there's no receiver because it's static. So it's just the same method showing up as before. Again, we didn't break anyone by doing this. Um, but we want to call it an enumerable of Int. And that works. Um, the range method now shows up. You can see in the completion list an enumerable event. There's a range method for us that we can call. Um, and this way you can add, you know, static new factories or whatever else you want, static members. Um, for now, methods and properties, static methods and properties, two existing types to your heart's content. And that, my friends, is everything I wanted to show.